And we're joined now by Rock Kubako from MassInSports.com. And Rock, quite a step for the organization, getting four All-Stars named to the team. The most since 2016 when they had five. I won't challenge you to name them. We'll save that for another trivia day, but there were five. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if it was going to work out that way. It obviously illustrates the change of perception in this organization, industry-wide with fans. But, you know, you knew Rutschman was guaranteed. You knew Bautista was guaranteed. There's no way you were going to deny them, and especially the Mountain. But then there were, other than that, I'm like, well, are they going to go ahead and take Austin Hayes, who, you know, he's led the league in hitting for quite a while this year, but batting averaging is supposed to matter, remember? Doesn't matter till it matters. And uh, so I wasn't sure. I thought he might be the third. Cano's numbers obviously show he deserves it, but I didn't know if they would take two back end of the bullpen guys from this team. I thought maybe Bautista would squeeze him out. They found room, and all four deserving, as Brandon has said multiple times, they all have their own different stories. There are different paths to get to Seattle. And whether you're a 1-1 pick who's expected to do this but has all that pressure, if you're a guy who's a high draft pick but has had a lot of injuries, even though he's got all the tools, it's a guy like Bautista that was released in 15 by the Marlins, or he'll sign him in 16. Nobody's making a big deal about it back then. And, you know, a lot of time in rookie ball, big control problems, but big strikeout numbers. And then a guy like Cano, who was part of that four-player four trade with the Twins, and he did not impress at all with the Orioles or the Twins in kind of a smaller sample size last year, also having command issues. No way he thought he was going to be an All-Star this year. So it's all worked out. It's four really cool stories. And, of course, Rutschman being in the Home Run Derby, He's from Oregon. He's got a lot of family and friends who will come to Seattle. His dad, Randy, is going to pitch to him. Just keeps getting better and better. Yeah, a couple of other honors uh, for players of the month. So the Orioles kind of rolling in with the good news right now. But let's get a look at today's starting pitching matchup. It's brought to you by Royal Farms. Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. And you could probably make a case for Tyler Wells as the fifth Oriole All-Star. I mean, a very nice season. And Rocky's going up against Domingo Herman, coming off of perfection in Oakland. Yes, and the Orioles have never faced a pitcher coming off a perfect game. It's probably not shocking. They've never done it. But he's interesting, Jamal, because there was talk that he might lose a spot in the rotation. He was struggling. They'd given up like 17 runs total. Total his last two starts for five and a third. And there was some buzz about that. Can he stay in the rotation? And he goes ahead and becomes a 24th player to throw a perfect game. You gotta love baseball. You gotta love sports. You just never know. And he's always been tough on the Orioles. Six and one, two four oh ERA, 0945 whip and nine career games against them. So he's been trouble for them anyway. Yeah, and Tyler Wells, what a season he's had. Honestly, if you look at the numbers, he's probably deserving of an all-star selection among the league leaders in WHIP, number one overall, with names like Shohei Otani behind him. He's only behind Otani in batting average against league leaders in uh, base on balls and ERA. He has been terrific. So uh, Tyler Wells not on the team, but he'll take the ball tonight against Herman. Now, Rock, I know you're a big Revenge Tour fan. Would this be the culmination of the Revenge Tour for Aaron Hicks tonight against his former club, the Yankees? I think so. It's been a lot of fuss. One New York writer <laughs> came to Camden Yards to talk to him. Today, you'd, I'm sure you weren't surprised to see a lot of Yankees media at his locker and a lot of guys that wanted to linger just to see how he was doing. And, you know, the main questions are, how are you doing this? How have you been so much better? What kind of reception are you expecting? And that delicate one, was it better for you to get out of here and get away from the booing of the fans? And of course, Hicks doesn't want to look soft and say, yes, I needed a change of scenery. But he did, without being soft, you can still be a change of scenery guy. And I think it just helped him. He said, look, I'm getting to play every day. That certainly helps. He hadn't been doing that. And he was just a guy that's getting kind of that fresh start. And the Orioles have really embraced him. He's worked with the hitting coach. He's been exposed to the hitting program here. And you know, this is, the numbers are striking. He was batting 188 with a 524 on base plus slugging in 28 games with the Yankees. With the Orioles, it's 263 with an 854 in 26 games. And four of his five home runs have come against the, with the Orioles. And, you know, he's been struggling. He was two for 26 before the RBI single yesterday. So his numbers have come down, and he's still been a lot better. And, I, you know, now it's a question of do you hang on to that spot? Is, you know, guys get called up, Mount Castle coming off the I.L. at some point, whatever. But he has helped them out so much when Mullins was out. And I just think he was a guy that needed to get out of New York. And he doesn't know how he's going to be received here. He's trying not to think about it. I don't think there'll be a video tribute. <laughs> but he'll, he's not worried about that. He'll handle whatever he has to handle. Yeah, that was a big question among uh, local media here in New York. What will the reception be like and how will that be handled by Aaron Hicks? Also on the injury front, Rock, Austin Hayes, Jordan Westberg, two players who got hurt yesterday 
there was good news on that front today. Yeah, they've avoided the IL, and I'm not sure exactly how, certainly how Westberg did, as Hyde described it. They both were involved in tough collisions. Hayes with a big first baseman from the Twins, and Westberg with a 101.3 mile an hour fastball to the back of his left hand. The ball actually hopped the protective screen and ended up in the stands. I've never seen that before, but he has the hand taped, but he was out here with a glove on. He was working. I took BP earlier today. Hayes looks like he's fine with the bruised hip. I guess they're both still day-to-day, -day, but x-rays were negative on Westberg. That was huge. And it doesn't look like they had to bring anybody here unless they're stashing them for the, an IL situation. So I think they kind of dodged a couple bullets there. Now, are, will they be available off the bench tonight? Don't know. Will they be in the lineup tomorrow? Don't know. But the fact they didn't go on the IL, and it certainly looked bad for Westberg getting hit like that that was huge news for them yeah you never want to see injuries but you could also see a possible lingering one with Austin Ace missing the all-star game that would be such a shame for him but that would, have been cruel. that would have been cruel <laughs> and it's nice to see someone like Austin who's really a grinder yes he's put up prolific numbers he's having a great year we've seen in stretches but he plays all out all the time we always see guys with that immense talent get rewarded yeah. when it comes to those kinds of awards in the all-star game but for Austin, someone who isn't afraid to crash into a wall, it's so nice for him to get an honor like that. Yeah, I mean, he's a very toolsy guy. We knew that third rounder from, from Jacksonville University. It's just always the injuries. And he didn't go in the I.O. last year, but he absolutely played hurt through that second half. He hurt his wrist making a diving catch in Chicago, the White Sox ballpark, and tried to play through, and the numbers really plummeted. And there's no way this guy's soft at all. It's just things happen. And this was quirky yesterday. A quirky throw across the diamond, pulled the first baseman into his path. They run into each other. He holds on to the guy. Solano, he drops. Hayes looks like he's going to be okay. And then they have to take him out at an inning later. But that's nothing that he did. It's just a bad throw. And just these things happen to him. And that's the first thing we thought of after Hyde was talking up pregame about how he's been able to stay off the IL. And it's been injuries that have held him back. And now here he is. To see him have to leave a game, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. But it looks like he's going to be okay. And we will watch him in Seattle along with everyone else.